love the channel and find it useful in becoming a happy retiree. Subscribe today. So let's go over this question. I think it's so important. Are bonds still safe? Do they still hedge against stock market drops? Just Let's just go back and remember uh, as a quick refresher, 2008, the S&P 500 was down 36%. But on the other side of the spectrum, three-month government bonds went up about 1.5%. Ten-year Treasury bonds returned 20% during that same calendar year. In the, the, the bear market that started in 2000, that went 2000, 2001, 2002, three years in a row, market drops 9, 9%, 12%, 22% in a row. And during that period of time, those respectively, bought the 10-year Treasury bond total return, total return here, was up 16 and a half, was up five and a half, and was up 15 and a half. So it really hedged against your stock market losses. Essentially, stocks went down, bonds went up. That strategy worked really well. And it's also worked the opposite way as well. In 2013, the S&P 500 was up 32%, 32% in the calendar year. Total returns for the 10-year Treasury bond were down 9%. In 2009, when stocks rebounded from the, from the great financial crisis and finished 2009 up 26%, 10-year Treasury bond total return down 11 So what's at work here is the question. And the primary relationship that we all have to remember, we've been talking about this today here on the show, primary relationship for, bo for bond total returns has to do more with interest rates and less to do with what stocks are doing. So you may look at your portfolio and say, hey, my stocks are up, my, my bonds are down, or vice versa, or say my stocks are down, my bonds are down. It, it's less about what stocks are doing, and it's more about what interest rates are doing. Bond prices and interest rates move in an inverse relationship. When interest rates fall, bond prices rise. So naturally, when we see big interest rate moves in either direction, so either whether they're going up or going down, we, still, we see overall bond returns. And, and that's whether you own individual bonds, this happens to whether it's bond ETFs, bond mutual funds, they respond. Prices respond. Now, over time, and this is why this gets a little bit complicated, if you think about it, the correlation between uh, it really matters on, on the duration, though. So, so think of it this way. Over time, because investors have made positive returns in both asset classes. So over time, the reason we want to own both, we, I own stocks, I own bonds, because they both made you money over time. And, 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 and it, so, so over time, stocks, let's say, on average have been about 10% a year. On average, that's including dividends. Bonds, on average, about 5% a year. Stop, and, and I'm looking at the 10-year treasury bond. So stocks pay dividends, bonds pay interest. So you get cash flow from both. And those are always, a, a dividend is always positive. You can't get a negative dividend. You can't get a negative interest payment. So you, you have a, so, so returns over time are positive. Uh, but it doesn't mean that they move in the exact same direction all the time. So if you think about it this way, uh, in any given day or week, so let's call it short-term periods of time, even one-year one, one periods, stocks and bonds, they can move in opposite directions. And that can help reduce your overall portfolio flux, flux or fluctuation. Recently, we saw this, but, but if you think about it this way, over time, there's a direct correlation over the long run. Over a long period of time, over five years and 10 years and 20 and 30 years, because both asset classes have made you money, they're, 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 there's a direct correlation between values of what you make or what you earn in both asset classes. Now, recently we saw this, this what is a, a direct correlation over time, again, moving in the same direction, essentially the same direction. Recently we saw that, that correlation change and go negative. So stocks went down, um, well, it, it worked to, to against you. So it's still, it was a direct relationship because they both moved in the same direction. Stocks went down and bonds went down. So what gives? So here's this, the, this is, let's talk about interest rates for a minute. Typically, and I, and I mean typ typically is an important word here, as, as economies and markets, uh, they never follow rules perfectly to the letter. You, I, you, you, know, you know that. But typically when interest rates are falling, 
it's because the economy is in bad shape. And the Fed, the Federal Reserve, is lowering rates in an attempt to, to make borrowing money cheaper so it can help stimulate the economy, get, get, get us out of an economic slump, get us out of recession. Hence, we typically see falling stock prices as corporate earnings are going down or contracting. But usually during that same period of time when interest rates fall, that means bond prices are going up. So they act as this investment counterbalance in times of, let's call it economic stress. Now, what about when rates are going up? And this is exactly what we've been seeing over the, over the last several months. As re- if interest rates are going up, typically it means the economy is in, in good shape and getting better. And that's exactly what's happening right now. If you think about it, unemployment is one of the lowest levels we've seen in history. 4.1%, probably headed even lower than that. We're starting to see wages go higher. So we're getting a little bit of wage inflation. Uh, housing prices have continued to recover significantly. Consumer confidence is high. Manufacturing is actually still doing really well. Uh, and again, it, it's translating back to company earnings are doing very well in this environment. And that tip, so when we get a scenario where rates are going up, like we're seeing, it typically means that stocks are doing well over a longer period of time as well. But during that period of time, when rates are going back higher, that's when you're gonna see bond prices suffer a little bit. So bonds suffer as rates begin to climb, in, 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 again, in part by the Federal Reserve trying to push up interest rates and then the market follows suit. And expectations for inflation and further, further interest rates interest rate hikes accelerate. So that's the scenario we're seeing right now. Stocks have done well. We've got to remember, even though there was a correction of over 10%, here we are. Stocks are still up about 15% over the past 12 months. In fact, let's go back and see as of today, let's let's go back and look at a, a one-year chart for the S&P 500. If we go back S&P 500 over the past year, and this is, you now we've, 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 we've gotten back some of that correction. We were about halfway back from making up the losses that we saw in a correction. Over the last year, markets are up 16%. S&P 500 is up 16%. And that doesn't even count the dividend. So really your total return is around 17 and a half, 18%. So, uh, so, We've got to look at over, over the longer period of time. Stocks have done well over the last 12 months, despite the correction that we saw earlier this year. But the correction from February was in part due to fears of an economy getting too hot. Uh, again, all of the things I just mentioned, unemployment low, wages going up, Fed is having to hike interest rates to make sure things don't overheat too much. So in the short run, and this kind of gets back to what's, what we're seeing today, in the short run, we've seen this inverse relationship between stocks and bonds break down. Inverse meaning as, hey, stocks go down, bonds go up. Well, we saw stocks go down and bonds go down. So stocks corrected for a variety of reasons. We had, number one, we had two, over two years without a correction at all. So we were overdue. And then there's this fear of too many Fed interest rate hikes. And if, you, if the Fed does it, it hikes rates too many times, it gets too aggressive, then that can, of course, slow the economy down and kind of work against us. At the same time, though, interest rates spiked. So they went from about 2% all the way up to right around 3% on the 10-year Treasury. Today, we, we settled at just shy of 2.9%. So we're, we're knocking on the door of 3%. And that, that has taken a little bit of a chunk out of bond prices. Does this mean the relationship is broken forever? The relationship I mean between stocks and bonds? The answer is no. The, the bottom line here is that once interest rates normalize and kind of settle down from uh, getting to where they are going to settle down, the 10-year, let's say it needs to get to, and I don't know where that number is, but we're obviously getting closer to that. It might be in the 3% range and then that settles down. It might be three and a half. But once we get back to a more and more normal range of three and a half, four percent, the that more inverse correlation on a on a given day, if stocks go down, we 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 very will likely see interest rates come back down, which means bonds go up, and that's that's the investor correl that's the that's the correlation that investors have been looking for. Hi, I'm Wes Moss, and thanks for taking a minute to hear about what's so different about my new book, 
you can retire sooner than you think. So unlike other retirement books, this book will give you a step-by-step -step guide, whether you're in your 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s, to learn from what these successful and happy retirees did to get there. I hope you enjoy the book, but more importantly, I know that it'll help you retire sooner than you think.